Hey guys, welcome to what is going to be an oddball episode. Yeah, I hear you, even more so this time. We're going to step away from the arch tops and the kit guitars and the license plate guitars, and we are going to take a look at something I don't do much of, and that's by an eBay guitar. You never know what you're going to get. You don't know if it's going to arrive in pieces. Then there's an argument of how it was shipped or something like that. And I'll tell you something else. I don't want to scare you, but if you see a case wrapped in bubble wrap, people go, hey, that's a guitar. Yeah, they might, you can see how they might come up with that solution. Then they start thinking, wow, it costs $200 to ship a full-size guitar properly. I wonder why someone would spend $200 to ship a $200 guitar. Yeah, no. So shipping guitars and buying them uh, over the internet, it's not that I've had bad experiences, but I've been smart enough to avoid them, believe that or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up this case here in a minute when we hit the bench, and I'm going to show you what's inside. There is a six-string guitar in here. And if you're good at spotting things that Kay or Harmony made, you might know what's in here already. But um, we're going to open it up. We're going to take a look at what was wrong with it from the very beginning, how that manifests itself. 61, 71, 81, 91. Okay, one year less than me. 61 years later. So let's get to the bench. Let's open this up, and at the end of the episode, we're going to see what we do with the eBay guitar. All right, here we go. We're all set up here. Before I pop this thing open, I had a case like this one time. It was bluish colored and same tan and stuff, and I didn't know where what went in it originally. It was fitting um, license plate guitars pretty well, and I think... That case ended up in a video uh, that Galia Volt and her bandmates did for the Rough Records tour. And I'll give you a link to that right up there right about now. But I ordered this guitar. I watched it on eBay for a while. I went through a couple of bid cycles. Nobody bought it. Um, the seller was very honest about what it was and... and um, had great pictures and stuff, so it finally got to the point where I came in at a price point that I was comfortable with, regardless of what condition it arrived in. And much to my surprise, when I opened it up, this is what was here. Now, this is a K, made by K, Old Craftsman, which was the Spiegel brand. Um, Spiegel was kind of like the target more a little bit up and you know if you got the old craftsman guitar even though it was called a value leader um, I guess you had the better guitar so let's get this case out of the way here and we'll we'll set this up and take a look at what's right with it and what's wrong with it okay we're going to need chick flick teal pointer a lot here this is a plywood guitar now Somebody felt the need to write Chris on it with a with a Sharpie or a magic marker and and put a tail on it. So I don't know what that means, uh, but that's not desirable to say the least. Um, but what this guitar, the construction of the guitar is like this. Let's flip this around for a minute so we can kind of make sure you see what I'm talking about. If we look at this part of the guitar right here, there's a block of wood that's inside here, a solid block of wood, which gives us the ability to, to um, bolt on the neck. Now, there's no truss rod, but the neck bolts on like so. That's actually going to be a good thing for us here. The binding is starting to pop loose a little bit here. We you know that we're not afraid of binding on this channel or doing binding jobs. Um, the back pane is the um, sunburst is in good shape. I think some of that would polish out. But again, the big deal here is we got a little binding 
issues here and there and things are pulling out. Um, we've got some separation at the neck joint right here. There's a gap and the action on this thing is really high. But now that we've got this flip back around, hope I'm not making you dizzy. Inside of here is a block right here, the tail block. And then there's curfing and, and this, this part in here is basically hollow. Um, and this part up here is solid. Um, so this is actually plywood, um, both front and back. And if you sight down this way along the top of the body, this is sunk in a little bit. Um, stuff is loose here. This piece of metal, this is interesting. It's a little bit tarnished. It's got kind of a weird pattern. You can see it there as I flip it back across the light. Um, it's got an input jack here. Um, these are the original um, knobs. Volume and tone are here. And the best thing yet is it has a 1965. 1965, I got that stuck in my head. This would be a 1961 um, K pickup. Pancake, Kleenex box, uh, whatever you want to call them. This is one that we used on Bob the Junk Pile Art Shop. You know what, I'll give you a link to that episode up there right about now. These things have their own unique sound and they're sought after. And I do like to put them on a guitar. Now, a couple little things to look at here. Um, the bridge, this is the original bridge. It's kind of interesting. It's wood. Um, and it is missing the thumb screws. And I think that they took those off somewhere along the line to bring the action down. The action on this thing is pretty high and it would be okay for playing slide, uh, but that's not what we're gonna limit this guitar to. Um, you can tell where everybody played up here. So somebody doing this every time up here, probably playing a little slide on it. Um, there's some rattles that go with this. We do the top. So here's what we're gonna do. You know we can't just make it what it is, we're going to have to junk pile it up a little bit. So I think we're going to take this piece of metal off of here and we, we're going to use it for a form. Um, once we're in there, once we, when I open this up, I'll show you what's going on. I think we can put a support in this area underneath uh, where this bridge is to kind of tilt this up a little bit and get this level. Uh, we're going to do some work on the neck. We're going to take this off here and kind of figure out how to get the right height and angle to make this come up. And that will give us enough room to raise up our bridge enough to put the thumb screws back in. We're going to dress this up a little bit. You know we have to. We're going to put Chick Flick teal screws wherever we make repairs. But we're going to make this thing as original as possible, but give it the Palmiro Junk Pile guitar flair that you all know and love or hate or whatever. So anyway, the one thing we will not do is structurally alter this guitar, uh, cover up the headstock. Now, a couple of these tuners are bent a little bit. They work okay. We're going to lubricate them and stuff. And we all know that bending these tuners back into shape can be a nightmare. We're going to show you a little trick on that. And um, anyway, let's quit talking and get to work. And I'll kind of show you along the way as I'm doing what I do, what you can expect if you ever run across one of these. If you can get one of these in the right shape, um, they're pricey. Uh, people like them. They're unique. Um, and we know this was a 1961 because it's the year that they had one pickup. After this, they started putting two and even three pickups on this model of guitar. But you're looking at something that is 61 years old right now. Yeah. Um, you don't want to scratch up these pristine. We, we wouldn't want to mess this up at all right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the strings. And I want to show you something pretty cool. Um, I held off on buying one of these for a while because um, they're pretty expensive. And this, what this is, is it is a Milwaukee... Uh, you could call it a screwdriver, you could call it a, a bit driver, you could call it anything you want, but it has a torque level, it has two different speeds, you can lock 
everything so it doesn't uh, so you could use it manually I guess or whatever but it has this pistol grip thing where you could use it for any number of things but uh, the moral of the story is the first thing I use it for is I can pop one of these in I think I'll give you a link to this below and, and this gadget here but it allows you this is all soft and everything it allows you to unwind the guitar like so, this is the best string winder I've run across. And I have to thank my friend Rob at Guitar 48 in Ventura. Um, this is, you could pull a bass tuners or whatever you want to do with it. Um, it's got a number of things. And also, it being flat, um, I can get an adapter that allows us to, say, for example, I want to put one of those neck mount um, pickups that's got screws and a tab on each side here. I can come in with a long bit from over here and do this. The flat small design of this uh, makes it pretty easy to use around guitar. So let's get the rest of the strings off on this side by going the right way. This thing makes life really easy. The charge lasts a long time. Um, the first time I saw one of these, the screwdriver alone was over $200, and every once in a while you'll catch a deal where you get the battery. Imagine buying a screwdriver for $200 that didn't have the battery, but uh, I got this with two batteries and the charger and for a good price. So we're going to pull the strings off of here. Um, now we're going to do some simple stuff like make sure the bridge back here is taped off and stuff so we don't tear things and we're just going to basically dismantle this thing but i want you all to see this put this on your birthday or christmas or father's day gift list soon you will love it okay guys we're going to now give you a word of warning you see this canvas bag here this canvas bag is going to be your best friend I did an episode one time about arranging things when you got a bunch of guitars going on. I'll give you a link to it right up there right about now. But I told you as you're pulling parts off guitars or you're pulling parts to make a guitar, get some of these bags, get a clip so you can hang it up somewhere on a, on a magnetic cup hook or something. Um, because when you're taking parts off of these things, you don't want to lose the parts. Let me give you an example. These tuners right here are in good shape. I could put a, a set of Gibson or Cluson tuners on here, um, but these are in good shape. They, they haven't been used that much. They work good. The problem is, is there, this one's bent right here. We're going to show you how to fix that, but I'm going to take these off. Why? Well, because there is a little crack right here. I think somebody dropped this guitar, and there's a little crack in the headstock right there. So we're going to pull these tuners off. But with these tuners comes, I'll show you here. This is a set of tuners off of what we all know is the California Junk Pile. Remember that guitar? I'll give you a link to the episode right up there right about now. Um, and they're in pretty good shape, but I'm going to send it off, and somebody's not going to be careful with it. So I pulled these tuners off and replaced them with a set of modern tuners that fit the holes okay. But these tuners here have these little ferrules. And if you lose one of these, guess what? And you need one, nobody needs them until you need one. Those right there slip on there, and they fit on the other side here. You don't want to lose those, so you want to bag your stuff up as you're taking it off and making sure all the parts end up in your canvas tote, hang where it needs to be labeled, and that way you discipline yourself to do that. It will be very expensive if you don't. All right, now when you start looking at this and discovering things, there's an extra set of holes right here. These were not the original tuners. Nonetheless, we're going to put them in a bag. And these are these little ferrules that I'm talking about. Those are irreplaceable, especially when you need them. 
I'm going to replace these screws. The one thing I never did like about these screws was they're flat headed. Nobody uses that anymore. They're difficult to work with and get out. But bag your stuff up, put it in the canvas tote. All right, we've got a crack that's starting right there at the base of the headstock right here. And another one that appears to be a surface crack. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to fill these old tuner holes. I'm going to think about what kind of tuners I'm going to put on here because if these aren't the original ones, oops, these, I really don't have to worry about. I can up the quality of tuners I'm going to put on here, and I think I'll do that. But there are cracks running here and here. I want to stabilize those with hide glue. And right there is that last ferrule that's sticking in here. Escuncheon, escuncheon, that's the word, escuncheon. And they're all safe in the bag now. And yeah, you can see that crack there and one there. So we're going to make sure those get stabilized. Nut appears to be okay. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to pull the uh, neck off this thing, which is pretty easy. You're going to see me set these uh, bolts off to the side. I always pull them and put them back in the order of clock position so I'll, you'll see me taking tape over here and labeling these one two and three if there's eight of them you do the same thing always clockwise um, this drill has a um, a nut driver has a clutch set up these things are probably in here pretty good be careful if it doesn't spin around on you but there we go and when you're taking these off, you want to pay attention that you drop them on the floor like that. And then you want to, there might be shims in here. Um, these bushings might pop out. Look at that. Just like I said, look, there's screws, not bolts. So this is straight into wood here. I didn't expect that. But given the price of these guitars, it doesn't shock me. The neck's starting to relax now, so let's not have it fall on the floor. There we go. Again, I like putting stuff back in the hole it came out of. And there we go. flip this over and see if there were any shims in there nope well there's something missing right there I don't know if it went in sloppy like that but we're gonna need this neck to come up to make room for the bridge to tilt forward a little bit that'll give it this angle to get this bridge at the right height you can see where the bridge went it's permanently sun baked there to get the thumb screws back in the bridge so this won't be that hard one two three it's really really important you finish second grade people really important okay now we're going to get into the body here put these rags here to make sure that everything's okay and we are going to pull these screws out we want to make sure we got a separate plastic bag to put those in these little screws here because I got a feeling they're pretty much irreplaceable now it looks to me like somebody riveted this here I don't know what happened that's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get the pickup off I really didn't want to take the pickup off yet but this goes underneath the pickup you can see that so I want to slide it out and see but this will be hollow underneath here we're fixing to find that out. These, you want to be careful with these knobs because they are irreplaceable. Okay, I think we just solved the mystery here because this moves, but it was designed for the pickup to be attached to it. Look at that. There we go. Everything right in the bag. So, let's open this up. There we go. Look at that one piece unit look at everything is still together that's great um when you talk about design that's it they built these just to slap on they built them in one place to slap on another um it's got pushback wire everything's good but this is riveted on here 
that is why it didn't want to come loose. So we're going to think about what we put over the top of this for sure, but it's intact. The electronics work. I can plug this in and test it right now. In fact, let's do that. You got a junk. Okay, I'm plugged in here. <laughs> ah, not really. Okay. Let's plug that in and oh, look at that. Ready to go. Incredible. All right, that's incredible. If you ever worked in a I've worked in an iron foundry and a canning factory and all that in my life. And to crank this something out and have it ready to go just to bolt on to something else, that was what was important about the American economy. Now, let's get in here and have a look at what's inside. And we're going to take all of our little screws that we had and all of our parts here, wrap them up, and put them in our canvas tote. There it is. We don't have to worry about anything getting lost. Now, notice we've got the floating bridge taped off so it doesn't go anywhere. But look inside of here. Do you see that? There is a solid block that goes underneath here. And so this idea that we're going to build a bridge or something underneath there to pull this up that's not likely to be the case and you can tell that the glue they used it's more like a bead of caulk in there than anything so uh, this thing is solid it's made really solid I don't know if you can see in there but it's just a bunch of blocks of wood put together so um, not a whole lot we're going to be able to do about this I think more so we can worry about this bridge and what we're going to do to raise it up. The next step is we've got to get the Chris with Satan tail markings off of this plywood without completely trashing it. So how are we going to do that? We're going to use uh, sandpaper, no, some chemical solvent that's called safer choice. Safer, yeah, sulfuric acid, it's not as safe as gasoline as a skin cleaner, right? No, we're going to use something that you won't believe we're going to go to an old name with a new product. That's right. Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. That's right. So, I remember Mr. Clean from the time I was very young in the 60s. I remember that when a Mr. Clean commercial would come on black and white television, the world would stop. All the females are like just enthralled with Mr. Clean. And I thought, you know what? Mr. Clean, he must have some real good cleaning skills. Well, apparently... Mr. Clean was a product of a very intelligent marketer, and apparently Mr. Clean had some skills outside of cleaning that I didn't know about at that age. Anyway, enough about that. So, we're just going to take and dampen a Mr. Clean magic pad, and we're going to go along here, and you will see that it will take this stuff right off, believe it or not. All right, that's about as good as we're going to get there. Um, it's going to be a junk pile. You know that. There's going to be some scrap rattus over here to distract your attention from that anyway. So, um, you know what? I think Mr. Clean did the trick. Thank you, Mr. Clean. I think. Okay, let's move ahead here. We've got a couple little issues here we want to take care of while we're here. The binding overall looks good, but right there on that corner, it's starting to fall away a little bit. Same thing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use bind all. This is good stuff. People use a lot of different things, but we use bind all. And what I want to do is I want to get some of it right here. I'll put it on a piece of paper towel with something below it. And I'm going to squeeze a little bit out like that. You can see it's, a, it's white. If you haven't opened this stuff for a while, be careful. You don't want to do this over a guitar. That's for sure. But I've got this here like this, and I've got bacon-flavored toothpicks. got to be bacon-flavored toothpicks. Um, I've tasted one of these individually, and so I know what this is. So we're going to take a bacon-flavored toothpick, and we're going to pull this back a little bit like this, and we're just going to put the bind all in there like so 
and smear it around and get it in there good. We just want to make sure that we don't snap it off. And you just kind of go around the binding everywhere and make sure that everything is good. We want some paper towel around. And then we're going to take our binding tape out of our dispenser. This is binding tape. Good stuff. And I like that dispenser because you can just rock and roll. If you're ever doing a body binding job, you use a lot of this tape. But all you do now is make sure that there's nothing bleeding through. And you just put your binding tape on there and pull it tight like so. And then... Like so, and it'll set in. Now, I'm going to show you another little trick. I can take a couple pieces of this binding tape, make a pad like this, and have it there. And then I got these really cool things. These are the most giant rubber bands you've ever seen. Uh, I really wish I would have had some of these when I was in elementary school. I would have been a cult hero, but I didn't have have the size paper clips I would have need needed to shoot one out of there see these are for gluing things up um, they're really handy they're really long like so and basically you can take these rubber bands once you get your binding on and just go like this go wherever the body will hold it put your pad in there like so we get this glue off of here and then you're just basically winding your rubber band around the guitar all right there we go binding tape giant rubber band in the morning that'll be good to go we'll have a look at this right here and make sure nothing's wrong work a little bit in there and the big thing is not to get the stuff slopped all over. Be really careful with this if it's been in a shop where it's been hot and cold because the first time you open it, it'll pop right up. But other than that, this is great stuff. I've never had an issue. In fact, um, if you want to see me do a really old trash guitar and replace the binding episode right up there, right about now, the Archcraft Junk Pile Arch Top Binding Job, right up there, right about now. Okay, we'll set this aside now. And let everything dry up overnight and we'll get on to some things we need to do for the neck first thing is we'll be more prepared but you can see that there have been numerous different um, tuner configurations on here that's what these holes are all about I really don't want those so what we're going to do while I, we got our bacon flavored toothpicks out is we're just going to go along. We're going to put some glue in the holes. I'm just using white glue. And then I just pop these in. If that point is not letting us down far enough, I just pop that off. And we just pop those in there, snap them off, and let those dry up. I'm also going to take a suction cup and press some hot hide glue down in this one here in this crack here and again push push with a suction cup push the glue down in and then we'll let all that dry up the point of all that is is when you're putting tuner screws in new or old you want to have good wood to attach to so they don't come loose and that kind of thing. Okay, so that's the headstock. If these cracks were really, really significant, I would be looking at running a dowel through this way and looking at where all my uh, screws for my tuners and everything were and, and making that solid because if you run a piece of relic wood or a dowel you make out of something through this way, it would pull all this together. So if these cracks are severe, sometimes you see cigar box guitar makers um, putting wings on and gluing wings without putting those dowels in and sometimes they fail but again simple thing heat up some hide glue use a suction cup push with the suction cup down the glue goes down don't be up and down start to finish because the same suction that pushes the glue in will pull it out so it's a cyclical failure if you're going up and down so start to finish 
with a simple suction cup. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is this bridge was altered by taking out the thumb screws that let you raise and lower the bridge. Well, if that was the case, that means the action was already high, and since there's no truss rod or anything and the neck looks pretty straight, if I'm going to need to put what I want back in here, that's going to make the strings even higher. So in order to fix that, I have to basically, if the strings are high here, I'm going to have to tilt the neck like this, which will cause the strings to be a little bit lower when they ultimately get to the bridge back here. So I'm going to have to shim this. So the first thing I don't like is I'm looking at this and um, you can tell there's been stuff in here. So I'm going to sand this off. I'm going to use some sandpaper that's on a block. And I'm just going to get all that stuff off of there like so. And make sure that I'm working with a good product. This is underneath so you're not going to see anything. Um, this, the, these appear to be the original screw holes. Isn't that funny um, that they save costs by not putting inserts, threaded inserts or something like that. But that's okay. Now, in order to raise this, we're going to have to shim it. And we know that if the neck is going to sit at a little bit of an angle, the shim is going to have to be thinner here than it is here. So uh, let me take this piece of cardstock here. I'm going to lay it here. I'm going to take the Love Pencil. And I'm going to lay the part that is going to serve as the contact point. I'm going to lay that right on the edge right here. And then I'm just going to take this pencil. Oop, let's do it right. I'm going to take this pencil and go around like so. I can flip it over and see where it lines up. Well, it actually lines up about right there like so. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some 16th inch veneer material. 16th inch veneer material. This is cherry. And I'm going to lay the pattern on here and cut a few of these out. Then I'm going to hide glue them together. Let them set up good and then I can take them to a belt sander and basically if they start off like this when I set them down in the pocket I can belt sand them so they're tapered like this. So this is really easy. Trace this out, cut it out. If you can do work on many of these guitars it's really really easy to cut a pattern so you can use it in the future and then while you're going through there you can mark these off and stuff and that way you'll know where to drill for your shim but that's what we're going to do to get this neck sitting in the right place pull it up enough get the right angle where we can get the string action low enough and raise this bridge up I just can't look at this and be okay with it
All right. Good next morning, everybody. Um, let's catch up on a couple things. We did a little binding repair right here. That seems to have held. Um, we made a shim out of three pieces of 16th inch material glued together uh, that matched a pattern that we set in here. We're going to cut this down now and get it to be beveled and do whatever it needs to do because we need to raise this neck up a little bit but tilt it back like so and we'll be able to do that with the shim we made. Um, while we're in this pocket we're going to take this piece of sandpaper 400 grit and go along and make sure everything is okay um, and square and then again we'll trim this down. Now, sometimes nighttime is good or sometimes is bad, however you look at it when you start dreaming about ideas. This headstock crack here and here, I think, happened when somebody put a new set of tuners on this thing. As you can see, we've filled the tuner holes, by the way, and didn't drill sufficient pilot holes because they're in a line here or maybe um, the shafts of the tuning machines was bigger and they were driven in. Anyway, we are going to put a piece of a doweling here and here where it doesn't interfere with the screws and the hardware and glue that in so that it's got some support, perpendicular support to these cracks. We don't want those to break out at some point in the future. So uh, that's what we're up to now. Okay, first things first, we've taken our shim that we've made and matched it to the pattern, including drilling the holes in that will allow the neck bolts to come through. And it fits in there just right. Of course, we're gonna take one of our bacon flavored toothpicks and make sure that all the holes line up perfect, which they do. Uh, and now, considering that the neck needs to come up a bit, but also be tilted forward a tad, we are going to take the shim to the belt sander, and you can see that the top piece is a little bit short. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this down a belt sander until this disappears, and we're going to run it at an angle so the shim is thicker up here and thinner down here and that is going to give us the angle we want and we'll just take a little bit at a time off and of course we're gonna once we get everything where it needs to be we're gonna paint this chick flick teal so everybody knows we have made a repair all right there we go you can tell that there's a nice little bevel there slants up and gets substantially thicker up here and this is going to take a few times to put in the neck on and off and getting things situated to make sure that our bridge and everything else lines up especially once we rob these nice posts and thumb wheels off of this and put them on here all right little glitch there always is one the bridge somebody had put a little spot of glue on it and they are studded and one of them was bent over so when we were prying this apart one of these came off and so I'm not going to feel good about this or some pieces missing out of here um, again this guitar is going to be road worthy at least I hope so so I took one of these bridges these are kind of interesting it's a, a, a rosewood bridge um, usually there's a notch right there there's not one in these and this has worked out good for me um, there's an arch here there is no arch here so what I had to do was basically notch this and this and bring this down cut the ends off to match that and take the arch out of this and I came up with this um, it has plenty of room for thumb screws it's good it lines up with everything else and most importantly, when we put the straight edge on the knot, I virtually have no string action height, which means i got to raise this up a little bit. So this will be perfect. Um, 
you run across this kind of stuff all the time, just go with it. People are saying, well, you know what, I would have left the original stuff on here. Well, wherever this goes, I'll include the original parts in a bag. But leaving original parts on something you know is going to get played and is going to break down and embarrass somebody. Even if it's just one song, they'll never trust it again. So there we go. Okay, guys, welcome to the world of what the H are you doing? I've talked about these cracks here. There's one there and there's one running all the way up there. It appears to be a surface crack. I don't trust it. The only way to fix a crack, a running crack, is to cleat it like you do in a body. We've done episodes about that. Fixing orthopedic cracks. I think I have a card. I can give you that episode up here. But what will inevitably happen is somebody will be tuning this and this will break off. So we are thinking about running some perpendicular, not parallel, perpendicular doweling at two spots on each side, one halfway midway between here and here, which is here, and between the two tuners on each side. And we would begin that process with using uh, marking and doing a pilot hole with a small bit, and then marking off how deep we want this to go in to clear that crack and kind of give us what equidistance. Now, I've been thinking about that enough that I generated some Yuri Geller sawdust here. Guess what? I already did it. So, we've got these drilled. We just pop them in like so, glue them, cut them off, and we are good to go. Okay, guys, holes are drilled. You see that there? I'm going to turn this over where I can see it. You'll just have to trust me on this one. I have made some chick flick teal dowels. You want to make sure you retain the words chick flick teal in your family vocabulary for the next couple hundred years because when this guitar is on the Antiques Roadshow, you're going to be able to say, hey, that repair was made by Ken because I can spot the Chick Flick Teal dowels. Would you look at that? All right, let's set this aside to dry up and let's get on to the next thing that's really really going to freak you out um first thing i want to do is i want to take off the tone and volume knobs and i've marked a t and a v right there these are irreplaceable do not lose these if you do i'll sell you some for a lot of money next if you don't have a span wrench like this you need one, trust me. I'm going to pull that off of there. I still am totally and utterly disamazed by how they did assembly line work here. Like so. Make sure I put that one on there. Yeah, these are original pots. So we're going to spray some contact cleaner in them and make sure they're okay, but they're 61 years old. If I could ever get this on here like that. And then we're going to also take off the input jack because we need the washer still there. Check that out. It goes on the top. And I remember where I could thread something on to something else without medication. Isn't that great? Okay, so I'm going to put this off to the side for just a second. And I'm going to ask you, do you see this? Well, you won't in a little bit. Do you think it's cool? Well... You won't in a little bit. Let's just say that. Now, 
I have carefully selected a piece of cardboard that is about this long, long enough to trace this out. I have a magic marker. Nowadays you call them Sharpies. And I am going to make a template of this piece of metal. I think you know what's coming. Praying won't help you. Crying won't do you no good. There you go. So we're going to put this over here. Now we're going to cut this out. See you in a minute. I told you you're going to hate life. You're going to love life one. Glad I could be responsible for either. Oh, by the way, no one says you can't cut cardboard with a bandsaw. So, do you see that? I like that to be in the middle, somewhere like there. And what do you know? This thing is just right. I hate to cut Milwaukee in half, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do, right? So, now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to make sure it doesn't move. And I am going to trace this out. Yeah, you're psychic. I guarantee you, you know what's coming. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Get some Kleenexes out. Yeah, you guessed it. The Malco 12s. Here we go. Time to call in Roy Orbison because you'll be crying. Yeah, you guessed it. Yeah, I'm going to. All right, there we go. We got everything mocked up. I've got some screws uh, painted to dry back here. Uh, the bridge is about where it's going to be. We're going to have to do some headstock work, but by putting tuners on, we're waiting for those perpendicular dowels to dry in. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and matchbook the neck to kind of match this theme here a little bit. And when I do that, I'm going to have to put some fret markers on the side to kind of contrast. But yeah. This is what's going on now. Okay, Tammy has signed this guitar. We're putting a set of Gibson Deluxe tuners on it. I'll take care of them other aged butter bean looking things that we had with the plastic tuning knobs we just got to put some chick flick teal screws in here now
Okay, we took the tailpiece off, filled the old holes, glued them in, and then drilled, re-drilled the holes and made sure that everything was going to be solid, new screws, all of that. I didn't like those flathead screws, so we chick flick tealed them. You can tell everywhere I've been, chick flick teal. And these push-in strap buttons, don't like those. Um, they tend to fall out, things crash to the floor. So we're going to put a typical strap button on this thing. There we go. All right, since we're going to match book the neck here, we're going to put in fret markers, and that's pretty easy. I have them laid out already with these little dots here. So I'm just going to go along and just get myself started. You want to be really easy doing this because if you smack too hard, you're going to end up splitting your fret board. And you really don't want to do that. So I'm going to put them at the third, the fifth, the seventh, and two at the twelfth. And they're going to be the white material. So that will stand up pretty well. I've got a little flapper bit on the end here. So I, you don't have to go very deep with these. That's for sure. So when the sawdust disappears from the flapper tape you are deep enough now we're just going to go on give a little dab of glue in each one of those holes then we'll just take our material push it into the hole till it bottoms out take a slanted pliers and run down all the holes like so okay once you have your fret markers in you have this tape on here so you can just take a file and file down until you start to hit that tape that tells you you're right where you need to be that way your neck doesn't get any more tore up than it already is. All right, let's have a look. Yep, there we go. Perfect. All right, we will pick out some matchbooks and get those put on the neck and get some strings on this thing and get the bridge dialed in the intonation correct and then we'll run through it on the bench and have a final look. All right, guys, you ready? Let's have a look at this 1961 old craftsman straight out of the Spiegel catalog for the rich kids 1961 value leader made by K what do you think oh I think the same thing you do because this is not the same guitar. This is actually a J. Terser body and neck that I bought out of, believe this or not, Japan. Someone shipped this to me from Japan. I got some fancy ideas. So, why am I trying to pawn this guitar off on you? Well, there's been a little glitch. And that glitch is named Gallia Volt. Y'all know Gallia Volt. She's got numerous of my guitars, including this one on the cover of this Billboard Top 10 album. That really, that really hurts me, doesn't it? No, I don't think so, but guess what? Back to the old Craftsman guitar. I was putting bits and pieces up on Instagram and... I get this message from one said Gallia Volt who uh, seems to have this interest in this guitar and the next thing you know I find myself driving down to San Diego and meeting her for maybe 10 minutes while she's changing planes 
and taxis or who knows what because she flew in for one day to go to the Gator by the Bay Festival. Gator by the Bay Festival. I will give you some information about that down below. But let's watch and see what happened when she come running up at the airport, had a little look at the guitar, make sure everything was going to work good, and then bailed with the guitar no sooner than I could get it done. Um, let's watch that clip, and of course, I'll update you when we get some footage of it being played on stage, but don't forget to give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't, and let's go watch Gallia's latest escapade with one of my guitars. <laughs> cool. Sorry, I don't have any of it. 